Uh, so one of the questions that we had was, uh, you know, maybe you came up as a wrestler like you did or somebody who was in karate their whole life. And, you know, they want to start improving their skill set in different disciplines of MMA, whether it be they want to train more jujitsu or they want to learn uh, Muay Thai or whatever that may be. How did you balance still training your your wrestling and your strong suit, but then learning the other skills without feeling like you were, you know, losing any steam or losing any progress in what you've already built um, in one base? Yeah. So, and I'll, <clears throat> I, I, I don't want to say I made some errors, but if I were coaching me back then, I would do a few things differently. So okay. I, I, and I like kind of start bird's eye view looking down. Toward the latter part of my career, I got better at what I was really good at. And that was wrestling, right? I got better at wrestling and ground control, developing the ability to finish a fight. That's, I got better at that. I, I understood technically. And then I think also being at a weight class lower probably helped me a little bit more. It released some of the, um, you know, maybe mental blocks that I had. So what I would kind of say, and I haven't said this like out loud and thought through it completely, but, but, but first and foremost, you want to think, go for the kill, right? Go for the kill. And I'm talking specifically fighting here. Go for the kill. I got to finish a fight. Understand what you're good at. I was good at wrestling. So put that like in a box right here. I need to get competent to good really good at other things competent to really good at other things world class if you can but i at least need to be pretty good in all facets so over here in this box i'm going to have i'm a wrestler who likes to take people to the ground okay well i'm going to get my wrestling ground control jujitsu and ability to finish like off the charts that that's off the charts the other stuff, I'm going to practice, 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 practice. For me, I'm going to start at, okay, I've got to be competent. And then once I'm competent, then I'm going to elevate there and get as good as I can there. But I think I, I personally put a lot of time, I would have taken some of the time that I put into getting better at stand-up and attributed some of that time to, because if you're someone like Frankie who as you're training stand-up, you realize like, holy cow, I have a lot of ability in stand-up. I can become a world-class striker. For me, that wasn't the story. I, I, I always want, I, I just, I wanted to, I wanted to go back to wrestling. I just never got over that hurdle where thinking, why am I not going to take this guy down? It doesn't make sense for me to not take him down. So when I reached that level of, of like awareness, I would have shifted some of that energy over to, all right, jujitsu guys, teach me how to go for the kill because I lacked that early in my career, that mindset of going for the kill. I just thought I'm just going to dominate you. I'll, I'll, I'll incapacitate you period. And you're like dominated. And then it was like a switch flick where I was like, Oh, I'll just, I'll just finish the guy. Right. For whatever reason, it wasn't there at first. So I would have focused more on fine tuning what I was already good at and less time on improving the areas that I, wasn't really good at that's not to say that i'm discarding them i'm discrediting them that's not to say that i'm never going to do them i would just have taken some of that energy and devoted it um both physical and mental energy to finishing because that's a value finishing fights is a value that promoters and fans look at i i just overlooked that at the beginning um I think that was probably because of me, right? Just a, a glitch in my thought process, but also because it was like growing and it wasn't as obvious, I think. And it just, you know, I was just thrilled to be doing it and to be winning. Um, and then I realized like, oh, okay. Finishing is a commodity. Sounds almost idiotic to say in retrospect, but that's how it occurred to me. So take the thing that you're good at, get freaking as good as possible as you can at it and then elevate the other things along the way. And speaking of your early career, one thing that I fell into, which was, you know, thinking that being a ground fighter, being someone that it's kind of like you wants to, you know, drag someone to the ground and beat them up on the ground. I, for a couple fights thought I'm going to test my striking, mm -hmm. you know, as, especially in my amateur fights. Uh, it didn't go well. Um, and I quickly went back to, you know, trying to put people on the cage and dragging them down. Did you go through any kind of like mental hurdles or anything like that, where you just wanted to prove to yourself that yeah. your striking was good enough and how did that go? 
Yeah, I I probably want to prove it to other people more than I want to prove it to me, which is like wrong in in and of itself. It's it doesn't matter, right? Like what other people think. You know, you do what you do. But yeah, I, I would go through different phases and you can hear it in some of my post fight. I was just my son's watching all my fight stuff now. And uh I was listening to one of my post fight interviews and, and I said something along those lines. I wanted to stand and I'm thinking, did you want to stand man? Like why? Why did you want to? So they would be happy like you got to do win the fight right like do the best you can with what you have and then remember what i said a couple minutes ago like the kill right like you're going for the kill that that that's the fine point that you know that i learned later on um but yeah it was it's a bravado thing it's an ego thing because when people think of a fight they think stand and bang and it's you know looks pretty cool from the sidelines but again it's if you're not very good at it uh it's not the smartest game plan that there is and one more question on you know different styles is there's there's a bunch of different you know stand-up styles there's the karate you could do muay thai you could do just traditional kickboxing boxing um so with that being said how did you navigate, like, coming from the wrestling background? Did you, you know, start with boxing and then start throwing kicks? Did you start with kickboxing right away? How did you kind of build the progression of your striking to get it to that, like, competent to really good level? Um, well, I think I'm probably still working to get to that competent <laughs> to really good level. Uh, but I think it was situational. I think it was uh, – I, I started with Muay Thai simply because I had a Muay Thai gym near me. Um, fell into really good coaches there. And then continued when I went to the, uh, when I moved to Eastern PA, New Jersey, it was, you know, they had a Muay Thai program and I got to ch train with a, a world, ch like one of the best ever to do Muay Thai. His name is Gunsock. Um, and he just, I mean, he's like from Thailand. He's unbelievable highlight video um, and career. But, uh, and then I started in the midst of that training boxing with Mark Henry, who is now, you know, pretty, famous in the MMA world. And so then I would incorporate boxing as well. So I, it, it's kind of situational. I'll say that I, uh, I think that comp me personally, I, I love Muay Thai. I think it's, I, I just think it's awesome. I think it's unbelievable. I, I think working Muay Thai with some of the finer points of, you know, head movement in motion and footwork with boxing. If you can put those two together, I think that's a, a lethal combination. Um, my least favorite people to fight, I would fight boxers and Muay Thai guys all day. My least favorite people to fight are the like Taekwondo guys because they come out of nowhere and that's <laughs> terrible. So funny, quick, funny story about um, when, when uh, Khabib came to the U S there was another guy with him named Adlon Amagov and Adlon fought in strike force. I'm not sure he fought in the UFC or not. Anyway, Adlon was one of the scariest guys that I've ever trained with, ever, in my life. He had these kids. He could do a split, like a Jean-Claude Van Damme split, all this crazy stuff. Absolute animal. Look him up. Adlon, A-D-L-A-N, Amagov, A-M-A-G-O-V. Just a killer. Uh, incredible circle helicopter flying knockout kicks on YouTube and everything. But uh, <laughs> he didn't really speak English. And I would, like, try to establish – uh, please don't head kick me, you know, when we're, we're sparring. Cause it was like lethal. And it was like one of those things, almost like you're watching a movie where, where like you're just standing there and all of a sudden you're like get knocked over or whatever. And you're like, where'd that come from? Those were his kicks. And it was those crazy, like out of nowhere kicks. And, and for me, those are like, when I say worst, I mean like toughest guys to fight. Um, you know, boxers and, and we tie guys, you know, except for the, uh, you know, question mark kicks. It's pretty straight on. Uh, but yeah, the Taekwondo and, and karate, Stephen Thompson type fighters, I was like, oh, come on, man. <laughs>